the prophecy of Isaiah, the passions and redemptive sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ for the human race. Isaiah actually is Joshua, Joshua. Now, the passions and the redemptive sacrifice of the Lord for the human race, the Lord's eternal love for Israel, prophetic passage of the great hours before the sixth hour resurrection from the original and the modern Greek rendering. Isaiah chapter 52, 13 to 15. Behold, my child is born and is exalted and glorified and greatly reduced. In the same way, they are exposing, they are exposed to you by many, so let your kind be glorified by men, and your glory be the sons of men. So many nations marvel at him, and kings shut their mouths, because whoever does not speak about him is seen, and whoever does not speak they condemn. And the modern Greek translation is, the passions and the redemptive sacrifice of the Lord for the human race. Behold, my son, the Messiah, will be filled with wisdom and prudence to fulfill understanding and fulfill his mission. He will be exalted, he will be glorified, he will be magnified to the highest degree. As many will be amazed at your terrible sufferings, so much will you from form the, lose the luster of your beauty among men, and so much will your reputation among the sons of men fade and fall. Thus many nations will afterwards be filled with admiration and respect for him. And even these kings will graciously shut their mouths against him. And this wondrous event will take place among the Gentiles, because those to whom nothing about him had been announced beforehand by the prophets will see him. And those who until then had heard nothing will hear and believe in the teaching and preaching of redemption. Isaiah chapter 53, 1-12 Lord, what did you believe in our, in our hearing? And the arm of the Lord was revealed. We cried out like a child against him, like a root in a thirsty land. He has no appearance or glory, and we see him, and he had no appearance or beauty. But his kind is dishonorable and scornful above all the sons of men, a man in a wound, and when we, he saw that they brought shame because his face was turned away, he was dishonored, did not consider. He bears our sins and suffers for us, and we consider him to be in pain and hurt by God and hurt. But he was wounded for our sins and softened for our iniquities, educated for our peace upon him, at his bruise we are seen. And all of us, like sheep, have gone astray, a man has gone astray in his way, and the Lord has delivered him up for our sins. And he, because of his pride, does not open his mouth like a sheep on the shore of the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer, speechless, so he does not open his mouth. His judgment came in his humiliation, but to whom is his generation told? Because his life is lifted from earth, because of the iniquities of my people, he is a sure in death. And I will give the wicked instead of his brutal burial at the rich instead of his death, because they did not iniquity, they did no iniquity, no guile was found in his mouth. And the Lord wants you to cleanse, to clean, to cleanse him from the wound. If you repent of sin, your soul will be seed for a long time, and the Lord wills from the pain of his soul show him light and create unity. You are righteous because of the labor of many, and he will forgive their sins. For this he will inherit many and will divide the mighty among dogs, because his soul was delivered up to death, and among those who were unequal he was judged, and he forgave the sins of many, and for their sins he was delivered up. And the modern Greek translation says, Lord, uh, the, the, it says the passions and the redemptive sacrifice of the Lord for the human race. Lord, who believed in these things, which we heard from you and preached to the people, to what was the Lord's power revealed and believed and accepted? We announced him as a small and insignificant child before the people, as a root in thirsty and dry land. He did not have a beautiful, glorious and attractive appearance. He had no beauty and splendor of face. We saw him, and he did not have a presentable face, 
not even a handsome one, but his face was despised, without honor or glory, outstanding in beauty and good looks among all men. This was a wounded man, a man who knows how to suffer and endure suffering and pain. His face became an object of disgust. He received humiliation and humiliation from people. They counted for him as if they did not exist, but he bears the heavy burden of our sins. He was immersed in pain and suffering, and we mistakenly thought that he was in this painful wound and calamity because he was being punished by God for his own sins. He, however, was wounded for our own sins, suffered and suffered for our iniquities. Educational punishment fell upon him for our own peace and salvation. Thanks to his wound, we are healed. We were all lost like sheep. Every man in his way and way of life has gone astray. For our own sins, the Lord delivered him to suffering and death. And he, despite the injuries he suffered, did not open his mouth. Like a speechless sheep, he was led to the slaughter. As a lamb is speechless before him who shears it, so he walks without opening his mouth. In the midst of humiliation, the humiliation that he sank into, his justice in judgment was ignored and trampled upon. And after his sufferings and his unjust death, who will exist and who will dare to tell his story? Because his life was forcibly and unjustly taken from his earth, but he was put to death because of his sins, the sins of my people. And I, in revenge for this unjust death and burial, will punish and deliver to death the evil people, and for his death I will deliver the wicked, rich, and Lord. For this my son has committed no iniquity, nor has deceit and falsehood ever been found in his mouth. And the Lord wants to completely cleanse him from the humiliation and humiliation to which people subjected him, from the wounds they inflicted on him. If you offer him as an atoning sacrifice for your sins, your redeemed soul will see his eternal generation. The Lord wants to remove the pain of his soul, to show him and throw him to the whole world a light capable of regeneration and rebirth with the wisdom of the human race. He wants to prove innocent this righteous man who conscientiously and lovingly serves the many, and the sins of these many he will bear. For this reason he will receive as his own spiritual inheritance many, and from the mighty he will take and distribute spoils, because his life was voluntarily delivered to the redeemed death for us. He was classified among the outlaws and was considered as such, but he, through his sacrifice on the cross, took upon himself the sins of many and surrendered to death on the cross for their sins. Isaiah chapter 54, 1, 1. Rejo Rejoice, you barren, and did not tickle, shout and shout again. Now, okay, I'll go to the translation. The Lord's eternal love for Israel. Rejoice, then, you church of the nations, until now desolate who did not bear children. Raise a loud voice, shout for joy, you who did not know the odes of childbirth. For today there are more of your children of the desert and of the widow that, than of the Jewish synagogue, which had the Lord as its spiritual bridegroom, because the Lord said to you, and this I've translated for you from a Greek article, concerning the prophecies of Isaiah, which basically is in the Hebrews, Yeshua, um, and he foretold the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to take away the sins of the world for our salvation, for his great, light, great love for mankind. And uh, I've translated this from Greek article. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Christ is risen, truly risen. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.